Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. The assembly elections in Karnataka are scheduled to take place on the 10th of May. The outcome of the elections would be known on the 13th of May. There are several issues that influence preferences of voters across India, across the world, and certainly in Karnataka. What will those issues be? Will it be the hijab issue? Tensions between the Hindus and Muslims? To what extent would caste factors play an important role? But the, for the purpose of discussion, this discussion, I'm going to focus on one issue, corruption. And to what extent would corruption be an important issue in the elections that are going to take place very soon? And I'm very happy to welcome over a Zoom call all the way from Bengaluru, a person I had interviewed almost exactly five years ago and I asked him precisely the same set of questions. I'm very happy to welcome N. Santosh Hegde, now almost 82, former judge of the Supreme Court of India, former Solicitor General of India, and the Lokayukta, or the People's Ombudsman in Karnataka from 2006 to 2011. Thank you so much, Mr. Santosh Hegde, for giving us and the viewers of NewsClick your time. When we talked before the 2018 assembly elections, you expressed your sadness and disappointment how the Bharatiya Janata Party had fielded former Chief Minister B.S. Yedurappa as its chief ministerial candidate, ostensibly because he had been given a clean chit by courts of law, by the Central Bureau, of investigation. Earlier, your report had showed how he and his family members, his sons, his son-in-law, had benefited directly, indirectly, from the scandal relating to illegal exports of iron ore from Karnataka. And you pointed, you gave specific names, you named JSW, Jindal Steel Works, and its head, Sajan Jindal. You named the Adani Group. You named several large corporates. And you all pointed out the manner in which large amounts of money went to private trusts, family education trusts, that were controlled by Mr. Yedurappa's family. You pointed it out. After your report, Mr. Yedurappa became one of the few chief ministers, sitting chief ministers of a state in India who had to spend time behind bars for a little over three weeks. Then you know what happened, sir. After the 2018 elections, the Congress and the Janta Dal secular government didn't last. Mr. Yedurappa was back in power as the chief minister. And then in 2021, he was jettisoned and replaced by Mr. Basavaraj Bombay. But corruption continued to go. Corruption continued to grow. And I'm going to ask you to comment on some of the major scandals, corruption scandals in, 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 in Karnataka. But how do you react to the Bharatiya Janata Party and the Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, again wooing Mr. Yedu Rappa, ostensibly because he's a influential leader of the Lingayat community in Karnataka. And we know they're really influential. Uh, and, and nine out of the 23 chief ministers of Karnataka have been Lingayats. So I'm asking you to sort of weave in the caste factor and the anti-incumbency factor into whether or not corruption will be a major issue in the run-up to the elections. Your view, sir. Uh, well, I'm not going to speak specifically of, about Mr. Edurapa only. I'm going to speak in general what corruption is uh, doing in the state of Karnataka in the present elections also. I start by saying uh, in my 82 years of life, I have seen many an elections 
But uh, the present election that is being uh, my, the, going to happen in the month of May, the electioneering also, I have never seen the, my, such uh, low level electioneering in my life. Uh, there is no holds barred, no laws followed, no ethics whatsoever uh, in the electioneering process by all the parties that are contesting uh, elections and all. Uh, you asked me about the uh, uh, question of uh, uh, corruption being in, uh, involved as an issue in the uh, election this time. I don't think that's an issue at all. People of Karnataka seems to have accepted corruption as a, a thing that we have to live with it and all. Uh, because if you see uh, the, uh, the promises that are being made by all the political parties, which according to me is nothing but corruption, in, in my opinion. Impossible things are being promised and all. Uh, and I think the voters are accepting it and all. For example, uh, one political party has said that if they are um, elected and brought to power, uh, they will uh, take the reservation percentage to 75%. Knowing very well the judgment of the Supreme Court has uh, specifically stated any reservation over and above 50% is unconstitutional. In spite of that, they are making promises uh, that they are going to have reservation to the extent of 75%. What does it indicate? Are you not owing the voters uh, on the promise which is unconstitutional? But they are not bothered about it and all. Uh, if that be the thing and the promises made by other parties also, one party has made 13 promises assuring financial aid. And one of them is giving two lakhs to a girl who is willing to marry a farmer boy, a boy who is involved in farming profession. What is the meaning of this? Is this a social reform? Is it for the benefit of the society? Another party says for um, free bus travel and the government buses uh, for women. Look at the promises that is being made. And uh, so so in, Delhi, in Delhi, women are allowed to travel free on buses. Every politician always makes these promises before the election. It's a separate matter that yeah, but, uh, politicians, I, I mean, the uh, promises are not adhered to. Yes, sir. Yeah, but is it, is it a bad, uh, corruption to offer all these things to receive vote? So, so you maybe saw... he knows that he, maybe he knows that if he comes to him the power, he won't implement this. But would it not amount to a false representation, inducing people to vote on the basis of false promises? Is it not type of a? Just, just to say, I, I get your point. But are you not being excessively cynical when you say when you say the people of Karnataka have come to accept corruption as a way of life? I mean, the, 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 the opinion polls indicate that the present regime, the present government headed by Mr. Basav Raj Bommai, is extremely unpopular. And one of the reasons for its unpopularity is corruption. And, and the brazen kind of corruption that we've seen. I mean, in the last year or so alone, we've seen several major scandals. I, I'll just name a few. I mean, the state government has been accused by the Karnataka Contractors Association that they are taking a 40% cut on every contract. They have written to the Prime Minister of India. We've had the Lingayat Seer, Dingaleshwara Swamiji of Balehusur Mat. He has accused governments, the government officials, of taking a 30% commission to release funds for that religious body. We've had school associations of schools writing to the prime minister that the, the education department of Karnataka is asking them for bribes for the recognition certificates. I mean, one after the other, we are seeing scandal after scandal. Won't this have some impact on the electorate? According to me, no, because uh, the, uh, the methodology of voting is such it is based purely on caste basis or religious basis. That's the foundation of the um, uh, 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 voting, uh, in, at least in Karnataka. That's why people get re-elected in spite of the fact there are serious allegations against them. The, the percentage of people against whom criminal cases are pending, if you look into it and all, uh, uh, how dare they contest election unless uh, being a criminal is a qualification to be elected. So, so, that, so, is, uh, that is not confined to any one political party. What you are saying now is because of BJP is in power and they are using that power to make money only. 
And similar was the case when it was the previous government, but not the 40%, it was much less. Maybe because rupee value was more then. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I repeat the point. You are sounding excessively cynical. Suppose, hypothetically, if you suppose there's a change of regime and the present government is voted out of power, would you not, would you not acknowledge that corruption was one of the factors? I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a hypothetical question. I, I accept your point that there are levels of corruption, degrees of corruption. Somebody is a 40% corruption uh, regime. Somebody is a 30%. Somebody is a 25%. But don't ordinary voters choose between the lesser evil? No, I don't think that is the criteria at all in Karnataka. Otherwise, BJP would not have got as many seats they got in the last election. Of course, they didn't get the majority. No party had the majority and they got by defection. They came to power. But they did get large number of votes. If corruption was one of the grounds, you know, they should not have got even 5% of votes. It is not so. According to me, corruption is no issue at all in this country. And uh, promises are the most important thing, according to me, uh, which attracts people to vote. Okay. And that's why such promises are being made by so, all political parties. So your father was one of the founders of the Bharti Janta Party. This was sometime after... The, uh, of course, uh, I'm talking about 1976, when as a Supreme Court judge, he was superseded by Indira Gandhi's regime. 73. Uh, 73, I stand corrected, sir. Uh, what I'm saying is that at different points of time, you have, you know, you adhered to the uh, advice of Mr. L.K. Advani. This is again re regarding when the government uh, uh, reinstated a person who had been suspended. You, your report on the illegal iron ore scandal, people still talk about it. People talk about the involvement of the Adani group, of the JSW group. We saw how the resources that belong to the people of this country, they were looted. We, we've also seen how the judiciary has been corrupted. That Gali Janathan Reddy spent three years in jail, he's out. But the BJP is not, uh, he, he's no longer a part of the BJP. The in infamous Bellari brothers, uh, they have had co there were court restrictions on them. So I'm saying that should you take an excessively cynical view that everybody accepts corruption, is degrees of corruption, and, and these don't matter when people vote. Only the religion, only religious considerations matter. Only caste considerations matter. I'm I'm, I'm repeatedly trying to suggest that you may not be entirely, uh, you may be excessively cynical in your views. Could be, could be because of the fact that I have seen corruption and the consequences of corruption from very close quarters as working as Lokaita. Now take for example this election now, hundreds and hundreds of crores of rupees have been seized by the investigating agency being carried for the purpose of electionary. What is it that, what does it mean? Where, where was that money going? And it's from different political parties, it's not confined to any one political party. And if people are not willing to accept money and vote, do you think that much of money has been be, um, uh, used in the electionary? I mean, these are the basis on which I, I become a cynic. These are the basis. And uh, look, who are the people who are contesting? You see the assets declared by the people who are contesting from all different political parties, including the uh, independent candidates. Hundreds and hundreds of crores of rupees, some of them thousands of crores of rupees. Where did they get the money? Did they pay their income tax? I know I've been to your house uh, in Bangalore. I've been to where you stay. You stay in a flat. You, you surely don't own the, the hundreds or the thousands of crores. Uh, uh, but, but you've seen the corruption in the judiciary as well. You've seen what happened to the institution called the Lok Ayukta. You saw the accusations against uh, some of the judges who replaced you. Be that as it may. You were part you were an integral part of the India Against Corruption movement that was led by people like uh, Anna Hazare. Then you were not happy when the Ahmadi Party was fought. You felt that the India Against Corruption movement was confined to the urban middle classes. It didn't go to the rural areas. But over these, this period of time, we've seen nine years of the Narendra Modi government. Corruption as an issue, not just in Karnataka, in the country. What do you have to say? The BJP came to power. It, it went to town that the, the Congress government had been corrupt. There was the 2G spectrum scam. There was the Commonwealth Games scam. There was the Coalgate scam. 
that the, every, I mean, I mean, the BJP came to power on the issue that they're going to provide a cleaner government, uh, 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 a less corrupt government. Prime Minister Narendra Modi even had this pre-election slogan, na khaunga, na khane dunga. neither will I accept bribes, nor will I allow anybody else to accept bribes. Where, where have we come in these, uh, in the last uh, decade or so? That's why I say that corruption is not, uh, has been sidelined or kept apart. I mean, it's not an issue in the election. It is an issue in the election. But unfortunately, a, a larger section of the society is not bothered about it. They accept it as a matter of um, impossibility, more corruption in the administration. That's why it is, yes, this government has not done anything to reduce the corruption which was there in the previous government. You know. Per se, or per contra, at least in Karnataka, there is an allegation that uh, the government of Karnataka is receiving 40%. And uh, I'm told, uh, opposition said, uh, uh, during our time, it was only 10% corruption. And all. I mean, well, what is this explanation? The corruption is there in every walk of life. I may be a cynic, but the fact is that I've seen corruption and the consequences of corruption from very close quarters. That's why... I have been following this election, not with the view of politically who wins and who loses and all. For me, Nota is the only voting uh, this thing. Uh, you so, 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 let, let me here again intervene. Uh, just because somebody presses the none of the above uh, button, still somebody will be elected? Because if, even if there's... Uh, you know, no, you see, it, 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 uh, uh, no yeah. but it will send a message. It will send a message to the electoral uh, political parties. People are not believing you anymore. No, the, when the, the, Nota the, gets the highest number of votes, they will realize, I am hoping that they will realize that they have to change. Okay. No. Today, politics is only for making money, not for service. So, 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 why so, do you think? so once again, with all due humility, and I have a great respect for the amazing work that you've done. You've tried in your way to, to fight against corrupt practices. Today, you were born on the 16th of June, 1940. You're almost 82 today. But I'm saying I've completed 82. You're completed 82, sir. So I'm saying that you are going to be 83. I I, I stand corrected. Uh, what I'm saying is that you are not just being cynical. Aren't you being excessively idealistic? I mean, uh, can we hope to live in a world completely free of corruption, where, where every person in politics is 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 a sadhu or a son? I mean, we can't be. Don't we have to look at? lessening corruption and then what is the role that individuals like you individual civil society has to pay sir play in in this in, in no, no, let me let me tell you corruption. i have tried to analyze corruption and the cause of corruption uh, very much in the, but i couldn't find a real good ground for that this thing now according to me the people who are indulging in corruption they are not afraid of law and the judicial system in india supports that thing by the, uh, the laws delays People don't get convicted up till about 35, 40 years and all because of the hierarchy of courts that we have and all. The, there is no medicine for uh, um, controlling greed, uh, no known medicine for controlling greed and all. In that background, according to me, unless the social thinking is changed, there is no way you can fight corruption. And all. When I was young, uh, uh, if, if a person was sent to jail in my village, my parents used to tell me, don't go near that house. There was a social boycott of people who have committed crime. And today, people go to jail, they're not acquitted, they take a bail and come out. Hundreds and thousands of people go to the airport and to receive such person and uh, bring him in a uh, procession, shout slogans in his favor. It could be criminal cases of murder, it could be rape, it could be corruption cases and all. But today, just like you say, how many political leaders of different parties are on bail? Just try and uh, try find out. Uh, how many so, people so, so, so according to the Association for Democratic Reforms, if you look at our, our parliament and you look at mo most assemblies, uh, state legislative assemblies, close to half or almost half of, of, the, of the elected representatives have serious charges. Uh, there, uh, therefore, against why, why, why is this happening? Because society does not think that being corrupt is being wrong. you got to change the attitude. That is why you may think I, I'm only... Uh, saying a hypothetical in this, but I have been to more than 1,600 educational institutions to uh, interact with the youth of this country and tell them to inculcate just two values. One is contentment in life, the other is humanism. If you have contentment, contentment controls greed. 
if they have no greed then you will be satisfied with what you legitimately earn we were told when we were young to be happy with what you have legitimately so we have developed an attitude of satisfaction with my, i for one and with my pension what little arbitration i did i have stopped that also with the thing and all i'm quite happy and as a matter of fact you should know that uh, one of the chief minister who's leading one of the political parties here whom i indicated in my mining report said my uh, he invited me to become the lokayukta he said that my night life should be audited so i told him i got only one wife and only one house i said <laughs> sir sir on, on that personal note and on that somewhat idealistic note i want to thank you so much for giving your time to the viewers of uh, of news click and and i sincerely hope i sincerely hope that in your lifetime and in my lifetime your children my children will live in a less corrupt uh, uh country in a less corrupt state like karnataka but time alone can tell what will happen or not right now we have Provi wait. provided provided we teach our children to be content with what they legitimately have all right i, I when, I, when i say contentment doesn't mean you or you get a job you become a sanyasi no you must have an ambition to become somebody big somebody rich also but legitimately not by stealing okay. from somebody okay pocket. for the time being we'll wait and watch what happens on the 10th of may when the electorate of karnataka vote i mean there are 224 vidhan sabha uh, constituency to 224 with the highest will have to be elected and we know on the 13th of may whether or not election uh, in the elections that will take place whether corruption anti incumbency and anti incumbency would be significant issues or not we'll we'll do our post mortem after that or, or we'll we'll learn whether uh, as justice santosh ekde is saying Uh, corruption is not an issue or would be an issue and other issues whether it be religion whether it be caste would matter time alone will tell thank you once again justice santosh ekde for giving us your time and keep watching news click yeah click on that button subscribe to this channel we give you the kind of news we give you the kind of views we give you the kind of interviews that you don't get from many so called mainstream media outlets Thank you for being with us.